Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Sébastien Henry. I'm very happy to be here virtually with you today to present the paper Protecting Against Website Fingerprinting with Multi-Homing. Uh, this is joint work with Rines garcia Viles, Pablo Serrano, Albert Banks, and Patrick Tiran. So as the title hints, we are going to talk about website fingerprinting. Uh, so I'm first going to say a few words about this. So this won't come as a surprise to any of you here that internet service providers, uh, ISPs, uh, can see all of our communications. So if a client is trying to access Google, uh, the ISP will see the source and destination of the packets, even if the traffic is encrypted with HTTPS, for example, and the ISP will know that the client is accessing Google. And for Google with encrypted traffic, uh, this might not reveal a lot of information about the client, but if, for example, the client accesses the website of an oncologist, uh, the ISP will also know it, and this reveals much more information about her health in this case. And overall, uh, knowing the browsing history, which websites a client accessing accesses, uh, enables an ISP to know a lot about the client, the private life of the client. And this is something that ISPs can sell to third parties, for example, and, and there are a couple of, of newspaper articles uh, here as early as 2007 and al also more recently in 2017, 2019, uh, that present evidence that ISPs sell uh, this information, the browsing history of their client, uh, to third parties uh, that can use this uh, to know much more about the private life of their client. And these third parties can be, for example, uh, health insurance that can use this information to know about the health of the client and, and for example, to deny coverage uh, to clients based on, on this information. And in some countries, this has this has other uh, critical uh, consequences. Uh, some websites might be forbidden and, and knowing the website history of, of a client might basically send the clients to jail. So overall, uh, this is a really critical information. Uh, and for this reason, uh, some tools have been developed to hide this information, which website a client accesses uh, to, to ISPs to attack her. And with Tor, uh, because the packets go through all these layers of routing, uh, the ISP is not able to know which website a client accesses based on the headers that, that it sees. But what recent research has shown is that uh, this is actually not enough. Uh, by looking at only at the timestamp and direction of the packets, an ISP can still know and predict with very high accuracy which website a client accesses. And to illustrate this, I, I, sh I showed this very nice figure from, from the paper Website Fingerprinting at Internet Scale uh, from 2016. And what this figure shows is simply a long time, uh, the cumulative sum of, of the packets, uh, where uh, outgoing packets count as minus one and incoming packets uh, count as plus one. And this is very little information, and, and we see clearly in this figure that only with this uh, very limited information, uh, two different websites are very uh, show very differently. And an adversary can, of course, differentiate pretty easily which trace corresponds to which website. And, of course, this is only a simple example with two websites, but uh, what has been shown is that it is possible to devise uh, so-called website fingerprinting attacks uh, that will extract uh, features from this metadata, uh, the timestamp and direction of the packets, and that will apply machine learning techniques to predict which website a client accesses. And these are very powerful attacks. And in one recent uh, attack, such, such attack presented in 2018, uh, Deep Figure Printing, uh, it showed that out of 100 registered websites, uh, an adversary is able to predict with 98% of accuracy, so close to perfect accuracy, which of the, these 100 websites a client is accessing. And this is not only the case in this small closed world experiment. Uh, what has been shown is that this is a very practical attack and, and in a more realistic open world experiments, a similar uh, precision can be, can be achieved. So the title also mentions multi-homing, so now I'm going to say what multi-homing is. And multi-homing simply refers to the fact that a client can access the internet with two different uh, networks, two different ISPs. 
And this is something that is already widely used. Uh, anyone with a smartphone is actually multi-homed uh, because it has access uh, both to, to Wi-Fi. It can access the internet with Wi-Fi through a public Wi-Fi or home Wi-Fi and with the cellular connection uh, 4G. And this will typically come with two different ISPs. And the smartphone is one example, but even a client with, with a laptop or desktop computer is also multi-homed because it, it can access uh, the internet with, with a public Wi-Fi, for example, and with his or her uh, home, uh, access, home network uh, through Ethernet, and again with typically two different ISPs. Or another example is a smartphone with, with a dual SIM, uh, which can access uh, two different ISPs uh, with the dual, dual SIM smartphone. And another technique that, that has been developed uh, is multipath. And, and uh, with multipath protocols, uh, the client can, can send and receive packets simultaneously from the two networks. So for the same website accesses, it can send some packets to one ISP, some packets to the other ISPs at the same time. And uh, these uh, techniques have been developed uh, mostly for performance reasons. And, and what we look into today is whether this can help protect against uh, the website fingerprinting uh, attacks. And, and we use this system model uh, where a client is multi-homed, has access to two different networks, and connect to Tor uh, through a multipath uh, Tor bridge uh, that can support a uh, multipath protocol, uh, like for example uh, MPTCP, uh, which is the, the most widely used multipath protocol today. And the adversarial model is, is as follows. Uh, we assume that, that the adversaries, so typically the ISPs, are local, uh, which means that they're only uh, located between the client and, and the multipath bridge, so the first Tor node, and that they're passive. Uh, they only see the packets, uh, they don't try to, to modify or, or remove uh, any packets. Uh, just look at them. And, and the other assumption that, that we make is that uh, the two adversaries, uh, those two ISPs typically, are, are cost equivalent, uh, which means that the client uh, does not try to minimize the amount of traffic that it sends to, to one of the ISPs, for example, uh, and also that they are non-colluding. So what this means is that the ISPs only see the packets that flow through their networks and uh, they cannot reconstruct the entire trace. They only, use, they only see the partial trace that flows through their networks. So in this presentation, uh, we will present results uh, in the closed world experiment uh, with 100 websites and, a, and an adversary trying to predict which of these 100 websites the client is, is accessing. Uh, but in the paper, uh, there are more re results in the more realistic open world experiment uh, with similar conclusions. And, and we use two different types of data. Uh, the first one uh, takes existing publicly available uh, data sets and simulate uh, our algorithms on, on these data sets. And we also show results uh, with real data uh, obtained with, with the proof of concept implementation that I'm going to present. And the main question that we want to answer here is how to split traffic between these two networks to improve privacy. And I will present the a privacy protecting a multipath scheduler, a high WF. And, and to illustrate the, the splitting uh, schemes, uh, on the right side, I will show uh, typical traces uh, that an adversary can see. And, and this is the same uh, figure as I showed earlier, uh, where a long time uh, we plot the cumulative sum, uh, where we count a plus one for incoming packets and minus one for, for outgoing packets. And on the left side, I show the accuracy uh, of one website fingerprinting attack, uh, K-fingerprinting, uh, against the different schemes, and here against the baseline, uh, which is when there is a single ISP, a single path, and, and it achieves above 90% of accuracy. And the first, uh, the simplest uh, splitting scheme that, that we can use is for each packet, uh, we choose the ISP uh, with probability uh, one half. And the consequence of this scheme on the traces is that they will all be scaled uh, by one half. Uh, but clearly, uh, this does not help uh, privacy because the adversary is still able to distinguish pretty easily which trace corresponds to which website. And this is what we see when, when we show the result of KFIG and printing against this scheme. Uh, it achieves around 80% uh, of, of accuracy. So clearly, this is not enough. And a second scheme that we can uh, use it. This time, uh, we draw a different probability P per website access. 
and so to illustrate uh, the scheme, uh, I show this example where the client uh, first accesses Google and she will choose a probability uh, 0.2 and send uh, randomly 20% of the packets to one ISP and 80% to the other. And similarly, uh, the bridge, bridge chooses randomly a probability uh, here, uh, 0.5. Uh, then if the client accesses uh, Facebook, two new probabilities uh, will be used. And if the client again accesses uh, Google, uh, yet another set of probabilities uh, will be used. So what this means is that for the same website, uh, two different website accesses uh, will uh, correspond to two different uh, probabilities. And so the consequence on the traces is that each trace will now be scaled uh, differently. And clearly here, uh, the traces are, are much more inter intertwined, the traces of the different websites. And, and this makes it uh, much more difficult uh, for uh, the adversary uh, to predict which trace corresponds to which website. And when we see the result of K fingerprinting against this scheme, uh, we see that it's now uh, below uh, 50%. Uh, but if, if we look more closely at the traces, uh, we see that there are events uh, like that uh, where the line go down. And, and what this corresponds to is a, a long burst of packets in one direction, and here because it goes down in, in the outgoing uh, direction. And here we see that these events appear similarly on all the traces. So for the, the red website, they appear twice, here and here. And for the green website, they appear three times, here, here, and here. And the reason why they appear uh, similarly is because we choose the ISP for each packet. And so if the burst uh, of packets in one direction is sufficiently long, for example, I don't know, 20, uh, 40 packets, uh, well, with high probability, each ISP uh, will see at least a partial uh, burst. Uh, probably smaller, uh, because it will only see some of these packets, but still, it will see the burst of outgoing packets uh, each time uh, one such burst is sent by the client or by the, by the bridge. And this is something that we can hide uh, with the similar, the, with the, the next uh, scheme. Uh, and this time we send a certain number of consecutive packets uh, to one ISP. So instead of choosing the ISP for each packet, when we choose one ISP, we send a certain number of consecutive packets to this ISP, and then only we choose uh, again the ISP to which we, we will send to. And so what this will do is that it will hide some of these bursts uh, for, for the ISP. They will still appear, for example here, because you still need to send them, but uh, they might sometimes be sent entirely to one ISP, and so the other ISP will not see them like here. And so what this means is that uh, the adversary will have much more difficulty using these uh, typical characteristics of, of the website uh, to, to predict which uh, trace a website corresponds to. And so what we see uh, with this scheme, uh, this algorithm, which we call HIWF, is that the accuracy of the attack uh, is significantly reduced. And so this is uh, what HIWF is, uh, our uh, multipass uh, scheduler. For each website access, uh, we choose a probability p in 0, 1. And then while there are packets, uh, we draw a certain number n uh, following a geometric distribution with mean 20. And, and what we show in the paper is that the average value 20 uh, has no impact as long as it is within a reasonable range. Then uh, we draw i, 0, uh, 1, uh, following a Bernoulli distribution with probability p. And then we send n packets uh, to ISP i, and we repeat this operation uh, while there are packets. And we can compare uh, high WF uh, against other defenses. And what is important to note here is that uh, our defense, high WF, uh, has no overhead. Uh, it does not add packets, and it does not delay packets. And in contrast, 
In contrast, other uh, defenses, uh, because they have a single path, have no choice but to either add packets or to delay packets, and so they cause uh, uh, an overhead, uh, either a traffic or a latency overhead. And what we see that IWF with no overhead uh, does better or similar uh, as other uh, defenses. So it does better than adaptive padding uh, when uh, looking at the deep fingerprinting attack, uh, which is the attack uh, that showed the, the best results against our defense. And it does uh, similar uh, to walkie-talkie, uh, while walkie-talkie has uh, an overhead of 30% in terms of both traffic and latency. So now let me, let me talk about uh, our proof of concept implementation. So we implement uh, IWF, our scheduler, uh, on, uh, with an architecture with two different machines. Uh, one serve, uh, serves as the client, and the other serves uh, at the multipass bridge. And uh, the two machines are connected with two uh, different Wi-Fi links uh, that serve to, to simulate the, the ISP link. And we add uh, some uh, delay randomly uh, to with typical figures uh, for the delay between the client and, and the multipath bridge to make this architecture uh, realistic. And then the multipath bridge connects uh, to Tor. And, and the first thing that, that we need to, to verify is whether this has a, a performance Im impact in terms of uh, download time. Because uh, I've said that our defense uh, does not add or delay packets, but it uses multipath. And so uh, we need to verify that multipath has no neg negative impact in terms of, of performance. And for this, we compare uh, with three. Uh, we compare our defense with three other schemes: uh, single path TCP uh, and two multipath TCP uh, scheduler. Uh, the default scheduler, which tries to minimize uh, latency, and and a round robin uh, scheduler, which just uh, choosing alternatively uh, one or the other of the ISPs. And on the left side, we see the time to first byte, so the difference between the moment we send the, the first request and the moment we get the first byte of a response. And the, on the right side, the time to last byte, so the moment uh, where we receive the last uh, byte, so which is, corresponds to the total download time. And clearly what we see here is that uh, our scheme, IWF, sh shown on, on the right side, has no impact in terms of performance, uh, time to first byte and time to last byte. And the reason is that Tor typically is the bottleneck and, and not the access uh, between the client and the multipath bridge where we use multipath. And then what we verify on these uh, now real traces obtained with, with uh, real implementation of IWF is that it does improve privacy. And what we show is that indeed it does. So with the three unprotected uh, traces or with single pass TCP and the two uh, def default uh, MPTCP schedulers, we see that the accuracy is above 80%, whereas our scheduler, IWF, uh, had an accuracy below 50%. So to conclude, uh, we have presented a practical defense uh, with multi-homing, uh, IWF. And what we have shown is two things. First of all, uh, our, our defense uh, requires a specific multipath algorithm to improve privacy. If we use uh, out-of-the-box multipath algorithm, uh, privacy is not improved. And also, uh, what we have shown is that we can devise a, a practical defense without overhead. Uh, here, our defense does not add or delay packets, so it has no overhead. And yet, uh, thanks to the use of multi-homing, it offers a protection similar to, to that offered by state-of-the-art defenses. And also what I want to, to emphasize is that our defense is compatible with existing defenses. It does not want to replace any defense. In fact, what we show in the paper is that if we use our defense IWF in addition to other defenses, uh, with the same level of uh, overhead, uh, we achieve uh, much better uh, privacy. So thank you for your time today, and, and I'm, I'm looking forward to any questions that you would have.